This is the Pal Talk News Network. The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of PalTalk.com, AVM Software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of PalTalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users, on demand on iTunes and on YouTube. And uh, thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, we're syndicated to an additional 12 million households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. I welcome you to the show. I apologize for the low lighting situation on my video. Uh, today, there are three main issues that we are going to discuss and uh, I'm hoping uh, that you will all jump in because there are three very important issues. Number one, the shooting at Fort Hood, Texas, uh, that we covered very extensively yesterday. Uh, number two, uh, the uh, fact that uh, in, in spite of, or maybe because of, and I will explain that, the uh, stimulus package, unemployment today reached double digits, 10.2%. Well, it didn't reach it today. It actually reached it last month, but the uh, reporting of last month's unemployment rate came out today. How can we be in a recovery when more people are unemployed than ever before since this recession has hit? And thirdly, tomorrow, uh, health care reform in the House, the legislation will be voted upon very quickly, little over a week since it was uh, introduced and already they are voting on a 2000 uh, page document and the promise to post it on the web for 72 hours prior to the vote so that uh, the public could peruse it, not that you're going to get through much of it in 72 hours when it's 2000 pages long, pulled out from under our feet by Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, not happy about that personally. Let's go to the uh, uh, big story of the day still over 24 hours later, and that is the shootings at uh, Fort Hood, Texas. Uh, we now know that 13 people are dead, 30 are wounded. The gunman who the uh, base commander this time yesterday was reporting was dead is not. He's in stable condition in a hospital on a ventilator uh, and possibly paralyzed, at least according to one uh, news media outlet, uh, ABC News, reporting that he is paralyzed. That's not been officially released. Nonetheless, uh, there are a lot of questions about him uh, because he is a U.S.-born uh, Muslim, and he uh, screamed Allah Akbar when he uh, squeezed the trigger, uh, wounding so many individuals on the, the Fort Hood base. There are concerns in the general Muslim community of a backlash. There are more specific concerns within the uh, uh, military community of a backlash against uh, Muslim members of the military. There are still questions about the motivation. Uh, one might say that based on what I just told you that it's pretty obvious what the motivation is or was, not necessarily so. There may be several contributing factors, and I'm going to suggest one right now, and that is that he was a psychiatrist at the Walter Reed Army Hospital for six years, at which time he was uh, counseling and treating people with post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, people that came back with uh, physical wounds as well as mental wounds. And there's uh, such a thing as transference. If you are counseling uh, a lot of people with uh, PTSD, this was documented uh, following uh, the 9-11 attacks here in New York City where counselors uh, volunteered their time to help people, both first responders and others who were uh, affected and traumatized by the event, uh, there was a transference. Even though they had not lived the event themselves, uh, many of the uh, counselors uh, exhibited post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. So uh, if you uh, take the totality of his situation, and the fact that he had been ordered to uh, deploy overseas to a combat zone, and the fact that he had strong 
uh, beliefs about his religion as well. Now you have uh, a broader picture of what was going on potentially with uh, Major Hassan that may have contributed to him uh, flipping out. The President of the United States today uh, urged against uh, a rush to judgment uh, over the Fort Hood shootings, and he also stressed that this was the work of one individual, and that's very important to note. Yesterday at this time, uh, we had been told that there were two, actually the number was three individuals that were in custody, and you recall that I offered a caveat as we were uh, reporting this as the situation was developing that we don't know whether these individuals would be held or later released. Turns out the, the reason they were running was to get out of the way of, uh, of harm. And uh, after extensively interviewing them, they did release those three individuals. They are pretty certain that uh, Major Hassan uh, operated alone. Now, regardless of his motivation, I just want to suggest uh, that uh, we have a problem here because we have a very finite armed services because it's an all-volunteer military. We do not have conscription any longer in the United States, and I am not one who is in favor of the draft by any stretch of the imagination. And I have nothing but uh, the greatest admiration for those who volunteer uh, to uh, take that oath, knowing that they will be serving their country perhaps uh, having to pay the ultimate price, you would think, maybe overseas in combat, you wouldn't expect it at Fort Hood, Texas. But uh, the point is, so many of our members of the military are stretched so thin. Some people have been deployed as many as six times. And here you have a guy who's been treating people, by the way, um, his ratings have not been particularly uh, favorable. And I thank, by the way, James Hickman, our correspondent, uh, for uh, digging into this for us uh, with the Pentagon and nosing around there in Texas and getting information, all of which uh, can be read in our latest story at paltalknewsnetwork.com. Uh, but the point is, uh, he was receiving... Uh, this kind of input from so many people suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder for six years straight, uh, that will take the toll on anybody. And, um, of course, why are we uh, sending the same troops over and over and over and over again sometimes into uh, combat zones? It's not very healthy. And when they come back, they're not getting... Uh, the kind of uh, care that they really ought to be getting. I would suspect that uh, what we are seeing now with regard to Dr. Hassan, Major Hassan, uh, is uh, sadly indicative of the kind of care that our armed forces are receiving when they come back. They've got a guy, substandard, but they've got a body that they could throw uh, there. He's got 